See, I think if you look at the uh, our world, what four billion people out there with less than two dollars income a day, and because they're living in faraway villages, you know, so so these are the people who really lack access to essential medicines and even the basic quality of life. And if you look at charitable solutions, I think they're limiting. You know, given the magnitude, you're talking about four billion people out there, so charity alone cannot solve it. What you really need are sustainable business added solutions. And I think that's what even prompted Novartis to get it into sustainable innovation so that you have something that's long lasting with a higher impact and is there to stay. That's more important. So, see, in Indian context, if you see 70% India, which is about 830-odd million people, they live across 600,000 villages. And typically, a life of a village is far different than one in the cities, right? Because these people are not highly educated. By virtue of being lower education means also they're not fully aware of the diseases and uh, the treatments that they need to take. And almost 80% of them are daily wage earners. So, which means if they're out of their field, because of illness or whatever, uh, they lose the daily income. Mm -hmm. And with that particular reason, they avoid to even treat themselves timely. And it's only when they're completely down and out is when they seek a treatment, they would first go for a traditional faith healer, more often than not, mm -hmm. because they lack trust even in modern medicine. Mm -hmm. And when just cannot move and is the time to see a doctor, they have to travel several miles to, you know, go to a city to meet a doctor. Sure. With that kind of uh, challenges, and given on top that they're earning not enough to pay for medicines, I think this becomes almost one of the bigger barriers to their healthcare access. So what we decided to do was, can we then work on both sides? On one side, we try and work on the, call it demand side. The other side, we work on the supply side. And on the demand side, what we realized is, unless these people are educated and made aware of the diseases and why it's important to invest in health or take timely treatments, and when they're not feeling well, where to go? And what's the importance of taking their treatment continuously as per the advice of the doctor is part of the demand creation. Now, this is what is actually leading to a certain amount of creation of market for health, which includes medicines, of course. On the other side, like I said, you know, there are hardly any trained physicians or the right essential range of medicines available in the villages. So we work with the nearby city doctors whom we bring in into these villages for health camps, on the spot diagnosis, and at the same time also provide essential medicines. So that's the supply side. And when these two come together, obviously there's an economic creation, right? That's where Novartis is able to sell its essential range of medicines at affordable price inside the villages. So everything is like localized. And this is what is leading to sustainability. So there is a social piece, which is our part of giving or helping create the infrastructure by working with doctors, educating the communities, linking them with the providers. On, on the other hand, work on the supply chain solutions to bring in products, medicines, and doctors into the camps. Sure. So in the past, uh, we worked with the bednet companies. We worked on some very local grassroots NGOs, primarily on the sanitation, also on nutrition, and a lot in the patient education. We have also worked with few NGOs on the drug compliance, uh, but these were, I would say, more regional and highly localized. But I think a bigger example here would be that all these health workers that I spoke to you about, whether they're delivering health education or they're working on the supply side, are actually youth that we hire from within the villages. So these are young women and young children or men who actually come from village. They're coached by us, they're trained by us, then literally retained by us, and then they deliver this healthcare message. So here is a large multinational with the right processes, organized uh, efficiencies, but executing through the local uh, faces, the community health workers. So they're all locally hired. So these about 500 people that I'm talking about in Arogya in India mm -hmm. are all from the villages. Okay. And not only just about people or the faces, even our local communication, marketing inputs, collaterals, everything is all localized in terms of the vernaculars. Yeah, certainly I think the first challenge that I, I would recall is our limited understanding of this uh, section of society, you know, because typically most of the multinationals do not go into the bottom of pyramid. Uh, that was the first one. So first is how do you really learn and understand the, ro the, the local consumer psyche, the cultural factors that affect the investments into health, for example, gender inequality, right? Now, there, there, is, there is this a huge inequality in terms of health investments into the girl and the woman healthcare uh, into a family. 
On top of that, then the next challenge that we faced is the cities and the villages are far away. So now when the volumes are so small, how do you ensure that you're able to effectively supply them into the villages? You don't have the critical mass. And then when we are building up demand, we realized even the capacities and the local capabilities were very weak from the health sector, uh, the, the provider's point of view. So how do you work on, for example, building up in-clinic diagnostic facilities? How do you upgrade the skills of doctors? How do you ensure that your products reach timely and are stored in the right conditions? Imagine a village situation is far different than a city. Uh, you know, you have a regular mom and pop store which is storing medicines, and cattle feed and multiple other product categories. So how do you ensure that drugs are kept safely, are administered safely to the patient and are almost ethical in their practices? Sure. And gradually when we scaled up, we realized the next talent is, is the challenge of getting the right talent. Because I said most of the villagers are not highly educated mm -hmm. and you are trying to deliver scientific knowledge with, 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 with the kind of providers who are themselves not highly educated, right? So these are the kind of few challenges we faced. But I think what we worked off gradually with our pilots, with our learnings, at least we found solutions to scale it up faster. See, I think the government is certainly taking adequate steps. One is they have now incentivized uh, the, the budding doctors mm -hmm. to complete their degrees in three and a half years and then go back and serve for a year, yeah. which allows them an accelerated completion of their degree. Okay. I think, but largely what happens is the village life is very tough. Uh, more than I think the practice, the doctors worried about the education for their children, the sanitation and uh, hygiene around, etc. their environment. Mm -hmm. And how do you then incentivize? So unless we create the right healthcare infrastructure, the local hygiene and sanitation and education, unless these are improved, it's difficult to attract doctors to go in and work into these villages. Mm -hmm. But potentially what could be done is either he healthcare platforms, which gradually, because we know telecom and uh, you know the ICTs are really working very well there. Mm -hmm. So can we rather have than these doctors train the rural doctors? Sometimes it's an old saying, you know, if you can't win them, I mean, you, you don't have to battle what exists there. Can we upgrade the existing facilities? Yeah. So you have almost about 350,000 so-called uh, alternate medicine doctors across villages. So can we find ways and means to educate them, connect them through ICTs, and then have the city doctors to provide the mentoring and then upgrade their skills? Mm -hmm.